Hello, everybody. Uh, today is November 13th, 2023. Uh, please remember, I'm a clairvoyant, clairaudient. So everything is for entertainment purposes only. Um, do your own research. Form your own opinions. The full disclaimers in the box. If you would like a private reading, contact me through the email. And if you want to get me a cream soda, the buy me the coffee stuff is in there also. Uh, and yeah, please check to make sure you're still subscribed because I'm guessing I wasn't fast enough on the uh, quick quick enough draw when. YouTube sent me that email asking me to go monetized, so they're kind of like keeping me at that just below 500 number. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I'll, I admit it, there's some dude that um, he was from some uh, a subcontinent country sub-Asian continent, Asian country that uh, uh, he's trying to uh, get me to pay him to be whatever, to increase my viewership. And I'm like, no, I'm not releasing my information to some goofball in Bangladesh. Yeah, I, I mean, Big Red Sea has been invading Bangladesh and has been using a lot of tech stuff to get into people's private information. I mean, there's so many kids that are on the thing that a clock does, the sound a clock makes. And um, I'm guessing a lot of them also have a debit card or some sort of money app on their phone that also breaks into their parents' um, finances. So... The, the app that sounds like a clock noise and um, the other app that uses the title from like AT&T, what AT&T stands for, that's a, those, those servers are in the Arab Emirates and um, they're the ones coughing up uh, stuff to Iran and Iran is the quarters for Hamas. So you've got to delete those apps off of your phones, off of all your social, off all your electronic devices. Well, let's, yeah, this past Saturday, I, um, yeah, I did do the live stream. And I do have to say to someone who's out there that they need to sit back and listen more and stop interrupting the conversation streams that are, we're trying to stay on topic. Uh, no, I'm not going to give you that person. I'm not going to give you any leeway because yeah, I had a quote unquote special needs brother and we were always told, treat him like any other person. Don't give him any leeway. So I'm expecting that person to uh, abide by certain social etiquette on the chat streams, okay? Now, to get on to my notes, um, yeah, it's uh, the first thing I caught when I popped open the computer, the laptop was the Swede, and I guess... Now on different platforms, there are groups that are getting together to find um, semen and eggs that have not been infiltrated with the whatchamacallit. So people who have not gotten the what the jabber do can now make some big bucks um, by providing what's needed to create a fetus. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? 
I mean, I wonder if those of us who are older, I mean, we still have all our body parts. I wonder if people would uh, be willing to cough up cash for what we have dormant inside of our bodies. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it's they're now finding out people who followed governmental directions are now having problems in the reproduction mat side of life. And that's what happens for follow, blindly following, becoming a lemming. And um, basically continuing on with uh, Mengele's research. Yeah, I mean, that, that little WAP. And those guys in Switzerland, I mean, and Billy Gates, I'm like, I keep waiting for the day when I try to load up my computer and they've backdoored it because I don't go along with the Billy Boy's ideology. And, um, yeah, I'm probably going to have to go in and uh, invest in a different platform computer that doesn't have his operating system on it. Crying out loud, who's sending me stuff? Oh yeah, um, yeah, some things that I put up on Elon's platform, uh, go find me, and um, I put up a couple videos that really say the truth about what's going on in the Middle Eastern countries, and uh, yeah, I really, it's gotten to the point where I feel like I'm a broken record. Because since about 1979, when, um, yeah, Khomeini went back to Iran and took down the monarchy, and he got his little gangs organized, Hamas, Hezbollah, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIS. Yeah, they were all put together under Khomeini's reign. And yeah, Iran is the one who, where the H, Tehran is where the headquarters for all these places, all these groups have to answer to. And uh, it started, uh, they started their promotion of this anti-Semitism, anti-Israel, anti-Zionist nonsense, I'd say some late spring of 79. And unfortunately, we've got so many of these woke idiots that don't understand what these guys were doing, that this guy was, what this guy did. We really have to start educating the children um, about the realities of, a, of this Shi'i, extreme Shi'i ideology. It, honestly, I'm getting to the point where I think HAMS is nothing but a continuation of H-I-T-L-E-R-S's master plan. But instead of just picking people of one religious faith, they're going for everybody who doesn't already pray five times a day. Now they're having... Um, the news reports are saying, oh, so many casualties are happening. It's like, okay, I grew up watching the newsreel footage of Vietnam on the TV during dinner every night. Well, right now, people are seeing what's going on in that one country in the Middle East, on the coast of the Medi east coast of the Mediterranean, and um, what's going on is that the guys who are fighting for HAMS, they were plain clothes. They don't wear a uniform because that way, when they are exterminated, they're not classified as military. They're classified as civilians, which makes everybody else look more bad. 
in just like here in the States and in the UK, people don't put the connection together that the Shi'i and the CCP armies don't wear uniforms. They wear plain clothes. So keep your eyes out. The, here in the States, the real wetbacks, now that it's getting cold, the weather's, we're going, we're in autumn heading towards winter. Those guys are realizing the temperature job. The, the real, quote unquote, refugees, migrants, wetbacks, um, the non-military members, they're now saying, uh, we don't want to stay in Chicago. We don't want to stay in New York. Because we're now being put into tent cities and winter is coming and they just want to, they want to go back to Venezuela or whatever else South American, Central American country they came from. So yeah, they're, I, I mean, they're really, um, the real wetbacks are bailing out of the north. They want to go south of the Mason-Dixon line where it doesn't get as cold. Yeah, there was a big article about, uh, I guess NYC built this whole ginormous tent city. And when these people were removed from their hotel rooms and taken over to tent city, they started having fits. No, well, I want to go back to the country I came from. Hey, you're just being placed in the same sort of situation as lower income Americans. Deal with it. You want the American way, way of life. Well, now these wetbacks are being introduced to it and they don't like what they're having, being tossed at them. Yeah, a lot of us work paycheck to paycheck. And uh, a ever since the faux flu and the forced self-imprisonment, um, self our way of life has deteriorated to such an extent that the wetbacks are living better than, I'd say, the majority of Americans and UK citizens and Canadians. Um, now, um, if you can, on YT, look up there, go and look for 60 Minutes. They did a really nice spot on what's going on and what they're trying to do to everybody. I mean, the, the extreme eye cults, they don't value human life. They, this is like a temporary stopover for them because so soon as they are exterminated, one way or another, then they're placed in nirvana. If they eliminate infidels, like those of us who don't pray five times a day, the more of us that they eliminate, the greater their nirvana paradise is. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's getting crazy. I mean, I saw the article, news blurb about just no brain Trudeau. And there's more and more stuff coming out about him because of how his government, his communist, the Canadian communists, handled a situation where um, some dude from India was bumped off. Well, now it's coming out that India versus Kami Canada are going neck and neck in the ring. And each one of them is violating, it's kind of a contest to see who can violate more of the stuff that was decided in the Geneva Convention back way back when. So they're duking it out to see who, who's going to outdo who in breaking more rules and regs set up, set up in Geneva, God knows, decades ago. And what they're forgetting about Trudeau keeps forgetting is that KC3 can boot him out of office and assign somebody else as the PM of Commie Canada. So 
wait till this month, wait till January, till after the New Year's honors are done. Because we know that Rishi Sunak is making a mess out of things. I mean, he booted out Suella Braverman. He was standing up for the real Brits, the real Scots, the Welsh, the real people from the UK. She was standing up and fighting for them and calling out the nonsense. Well, Swishy Rishi just booted her out and put David Cameron in to that slot. I mean, Cameron had his, what, five, six years back, what, 210 to 216 to do damage. Well, now he's back. Swishy Rishi put him in. And um, I, I'm getting the thing that... Um, Swishy Rishi actually is pandering to his brown-skinned brother. He doesn't want the true Anglo-Saxons, the true Celts, the true Gaelic, the true Welsh to be represented in the UK. So, yeah, and with Suella calling him out on his calling out the government on the crap and by swishy rishy putting somebody in that wasn't so hot to begin with it's going to really start exploding more and more and more heat is going to be put on KC3 because even though it's a constitutional monarchy there are backdoor loopholes that he can use. He just doesn't... He, I don't think he's strong enough for the fight that needs to be done. I mean, they, we've got these... It would look horrible for a guy who's going to be 75 in a couple of days, or t tomorrow, um, to go after idiots like that 20-year-old Greta Thunberg. Uh, I mean, Thunberg, whatever, little Greta, she's 20 now. And here she had this, she was in the Netherlands, and um, it was supposed to be a people for climate change to prevent global warming and all that nonsense. Well, then all of a sudden she flips the script and turns it into a pro-Palestine, pro-HAMS party. And some guy did jump on stage to pull the, to do a, a markle by pulling the microphone out of her hand. And he, the guy who tried to call her out for saying, hey, this is supposed to be climate change, not a pro-HAMS party. He's the guy who got into trouble instead of her for flipping the script. My question, hey, how is Greta supporting herself? Who's paying for all her travel, her hotel, her meals, her clothing? Who's covering her health insurance? I, this little kid, this 20-something, doesn't have a real job, so how is she paying her own taxes? How is she sustaining her lifestyle? Mommy and Daddy? Or is she actually on the payroll of some big corporation or big globalist society? So if anybody has a clue how Greta's paying her way, can you drop it down in the co comment section? Now, yeah, I did look at some of those scandal channels while I'm scrolling through stuff. And... Um, yeah, one of the big stinks now is allegedly um, Henry and Rachel have been invited to Sandrin, Sandraham in uh, December, but there's a hitch. They got to bring the kids. 
So if there aren't any, if these kids can't travel outside of the United States, um, they're going to have to come up with some evil excuse to not show up. So now it's, it's being slowly leaked out that, yeah, the invitation is offered with a contingency factor that they must bring the alleged children. Yeah, and the other thing that I'm getting kind of annoyed at, we know last Thursday, um, Samantha Markle did have her first day in court. And in my personal opinion, that Andy dude from PPNP, um, it's... I think he ambushed her. She looked really exhausted, really tired. She was really stressed out. And this guy started clip, clipping away at all these, taking pictures and then putting his phone in her face. And I think she should have just been allowed to go home and get some rest. But he kind of pushed his way into the mess and started asking questions. Well, now... His little news clips and photographs are being used by everybody. Is he selling that, selling his news clips and photos? Hey, Andy, how much money are you making off of your intrusion into Samantha's space? Maybe you should ta be tossing all the money you're making into Samantha's legal fund. Yeah, I, I think, um, and that chick that works with him, Steph, yeah, she, she brought, she makes it public saying, hey, she's not going to acknowledge or answer any of your comments unless there's a dollar, dollar a pound sign or euro sign connected to it. You have to pay her money for her to acknowledge you. Yeah. So everything that those two are making should be going to Samantha's attorneys, okay? Yeah, because she has been basically victimized by the loyal followers or worshipers of her half-sister. Um, now, I... I caught Mark Dice this morning, and his commentary this morning is on the fact that anybody who's paler than a brown paper bag, they're being blamed for everything. If you're Caucasian, you're being blamed for air pollution. Well, folks, um, take a look at a lot of the cities on the continent of Asia. Look at the cities in India and the cities in China. Those have the worst air pollution on earth. And uh, let's put it this way. The majority of those residents of those two countries, if you're in India, you're a shade of brown. If you're in China, you're a shade of yellow. Those are the worst areas for air pollution. And here these wokey fools are saying it's the whites when it, the people who are responsible are brown and yellow. That's how poorly educated the under 40s are. They don't understand what's actually going on. And now we've got uh, the Apex Summit. I mean, last year, yeah. Uh, Barry through JoJo, I mean, they're secretly, I mean, the next APEC summit is coming up in a week or so, and it's supposed to be held in San Francisco. Well, I guess the game plan is that Barry is going to have JoJo sign documents that partner my country 
United States of America with the sea, with the Big Red Sea. So the Big Red Sea can count on the assistance of us, of the USA, in their takeover of Taiwan and allowing the Big Red Sea to control all of our economic ends with trade and business. Barry is going to allow, is telling Jojo or his clone double, his imposter person, to sell out America. Yeah, that's what Barry's doing. I mean, even now, Barry is allegedly having Jojo negotiate talks in Qatar to free the alleged hostages? Well, it's becoming more and more public knowledge that Qatar is the money pipeline to Tehran. And Tehran, like I've said time and time again, is the HQ for all this extreme Shiite cult that wants to take over. And honestly, I don't think there's too many quote-unquote hostages left because the Shia I cult doesn't have any value for human life. It's like even here they allegedly somebody left fuel out so that the generators of a big hospital in southern Gaza could continue to operate? Well, the fuel for the generators didn't go to the hospital. It went to the HAMAS army. And they're saying, oh, there's infants that aren't being, that are like in, supposed to be in incubators and this and that. And I'm like, folks, they don't value human life. And whatever you do, it's just going to go to support, to give more aid to the people being told what to do out of Tehran. And, uh, yeah, I've been talking to some other people that basically were bouncing around the same place as I were at the same time. And we're all noticing the same stuff. And we're all saying the same things. It's, it's, we've got to stand up and let people know. And yeah, we had that goofy debate, which was kind of like a shouting fest between some of the idiots. I'm doing my homework and honestly, uh, check out Doug from North Dakota. I think a Don and Doug ticket is our salvation. And in the meantime, we need to openly, somebody needs to start protesting in front of Barry's houses. Where is he? And take, start watching the vehicles back and forth from Barry's house. It's gonna, he's the uh, mastermind of all this bullshit. Sorry, folks. Yeah, I use bad words. Sometimes a potty mouth. But, yeah. And, um, as for some other stuff, I will admit, after the live video on Saturday, and dealing with a person who doesn't know boundaries. I just started feeling totally wiped out. So, yeah, yesterday I just did, um, yeah, I looked at a couple things for about an hour, and then I said, F it, I'm going back to bed. So that's what I did. I basically did a, uh, <laughs> 
I own a couple t complete TV shows. So basically, I just kind of like um, binge watched on uh, some place set in Bon Top, Louisiana. <laughs> I just needed a, some brain candy and just to kind of like immerse myself in a land of make believe. But folks, there's a lot more out there. A lot of the truth is masked in fi fiction fantasy out of Hollywood, out of California. Stuff you don't realize is actually reality. So, yeah, so tomorrow is his birthday. Happy birthday, Ch Chucky. Uh, everybody have a good Monday. If I'm not in the chat, it means I probably went and hung out with some friends tonight. They were talking about going out to a certain place for dinner, and I'm like, eh, maybe. Saves me from cooking tonight. Um, but everyone have a great Monday night. I guess it's foot Monday night football. Don't know who's playing, and because I've been told by family members I'm not to watch any football. Because a certain we want a certain team to progress as far as possible, and hope those stupid Swifties stop causing uh, confusion. Focus on the guys on the field, and not who's in a skybox. Yeah, stop taking the the focus off the real deal. What's going on? So. I'll be, I'll have a video up on Wednesday the 15th. Everybody have a good night. Bye.